Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to the Math Puzzle Crash Course. I've got a problem here. I guess this would have to go into the viral category of um, problems that we've been looking at. Uh, sorry about the glare. It's these reading glasses. Uh, I have got somewhat of a glare, but um, anyhow, this problem here, it's a uh, 48 divided by 2 uh, multiplied by the quantity 9 plus 3. All right, so as we do with a lot of these problems, if you'd like to pause the video right here uh, and then come back in a, in a few minutes or whatever, however long it takes you to solve this, we'll go through this together. Um, and there are some things we probably should discuss with this problem, kind of like a lot of the other viral ones that we have as well. All right, go ahead, take some time and work it out. I'll just sit here and wait. <laughs> All right. You can pause it, so I'm just going to go ahead. So, um, first of all, the order of operations. Well, what is the order of operations? Well, basically, if, if you are from North America, you're probably familiar with PEMDAS. Uh, it's an acronym. Uh, basically describes uh, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and division left to right, uh, and then finally addition and subtraction. The big thing that people mess up on this is uh, the fact that multiplication and division um, have equal precedence and they're solved left to right. Uh, division is the same thing as multiplying by a reciprocal. Um, so you really just solve multiplication and division left to right. Now we're going to get a little bit more, we're going to talk a little bit about implicit multiplication which is really probably the biggest reason that makes this problem viral. Uh, and then finally, we have addition and subtraction as the fourth step. Um, just remember, subtraction is just adding a negative number. All right, so we've got a couple things going on. The first thing here um, is there is some historical context for implicit multiplication. Um, having precedence over explicit multiplication and division. Um, but it's really not how the order of operations um, is really interpreted today. I know in, in North America, uh, in um, the educational system, I know in the U.S., they really stress PEMDAS being, you know, multiplication and division have equal precedence, and they really don't differentiate uh, between uh, implicit multiplication by juxtaposition. And I'm meaning um, what we've got here, where you have this two outside of the parentheses. They don't distinguish between that and explicit multiplication. And what I mean by explicit multiplication would be if I actually had a multiplication sign here. Um, so that might be the first step. I know some people have actually been confused when they see this because they look at this and they say, well, wait, there's no operator here. Am I adding? Am I subtracting? Um, but if you remember from uh, your, your mathematics education, um, whenever you see something like this, it's always implied that this represents multiplication. So I uh, just want to get that out of the way. Um, now, a second thing that we've got going on here is the use of the obelisk. <laughs> I hope I said that right, obelisk. Uh, it's this division symbol here, the line with the two dots, the one above, one below. Um, I think it was Johann Rahn, I believe. I think it was a Swiss mathematician. I wrote the book Teutsch Algebra back in 1659. Um, it used to be interpreted a long time ago that everything to the left would be in a numerator and everything to the right in a denominator. So it was basically acting as a grouping symbol, and it would have put 48 in the numerator, and then this 2 times the um, quantity 9 plus 3 here, that would have put all of this in a denominator. Now it's not looked that way any at that way anymore. Um, you've got you know basically the three symbols that I'm familiar with are the obulus, which is this symbol. Uh, you have the solidus, which it would be like a forward slash, uh, and then you have the vinculum. Now I think I'm blocking it with the webcam here, but the vinculum would be like your horizontal fraction bar. It's a horizontal line. Um, the that the vinculum does have grouping properties because you can draw. Um, you can write in the numbers above the line and below the line, so that gives you the grouping. Uh, but um, but the way the solidus and the obulus are interpreted, they're really not considered to have grouping properties. They're more 
they're, they're acting on the number immediately to the left and the number immediately to the right. So the way it would be interpreted today would be 48 divided by 2 uh, would, be, would be your division. So, I mean, a lot of people will say, too, this is just a poorly written problem. And, yeah, I would have to agree with you. I mean, you've got, you've got a, a very modern interpretation of the order of operations, which has been around for a very long time. And if you follow that strictly, uh, you're going to end up with an answer. Well, I'm not going to give away the answer yet. But you would just be doing your multiplication and division left to right. Uh, the obelisk, you would interpret that just as 48 divided by 2. So pretty straightforward, actually. Um, let's see here. Yes, um, I do see a lot of people make a mistake when they they will give an answer that that's not the one that I'm going to list here. Um, but and they'll say that the P of PEMDAS and the B of BEDMAS mean that you solve everything out inside of the parentheses, but then you also solve what's immediately outside. And if you look at the way PEMDAS and BODMAS are defined, the P and the B, they're our only concern with what's inside, not incited. Okay, that's a misspelling. They're only concerned with what's inside of the parentheses or brackets, not with what's outside. So the P and the B of PEMDAS and BODMAS do not uh, concern themselves with implicit multiplication. You're really looking at something like PEJMDAS, which I can't even say it, P-E-J-M-D-A-S, I uh, have seen that listed before where the J represents your, your implicit multiplication uh, by juxtaposition. Um, now here's an example coming. This is from, from Wolfram Alpha, the website, and how they solve it. And basically they're interpreting it just as I, I mentioned, using, you know, the interpretation of the obelisk would be, you know, if I have 48 uh, divided by 2, it's the same thing as writing it as a fraction, 48 divided by 2. And it would be this fraction times 9 plus 3. Um, and if you solve the 9 plus 3 inside the parentheses, you get 12. Well, 24 times 12 would give you the answer of 288. So, so fairly simple. Uh, and here, if you look at their step-by-step -step solution, they're just working through it. And, of course, the first step is to solve everything inside of the parentheses, uh, which is 9 plus 3 is 12. And then you're left with 48 halves. 48 divided by 2 times 12, which is the same as 24 times 12, and gives you 288. Um, now, I, I see a lot of people um, have answered problems similar to this, uh, a lot of viral problems, and they try to come out with this, you know, they come out and they show the distributive property, and they try to show why the distributive property gives a different answer. Um, but what they're not realizing is they're misapplying the distributive property, um, trying to make an argument on the order of operations on using the distributive property. Uh, I don't even know if they realize what they're doing. But, you know, the, the thing that we're looking at here is whether you are going to, you know, they, they say that you distribute the 2 and not the 48 divided by 2. So what they're doing is they're making a decision about the order of operations before they've even applied the distributive property. So um, the, the best way I could describe that would be like putting the cart before the horse. Um, you know, there's no controversy that the first thing that we solve here would be the 9 plus 3. Uh, you evaluate that first. Um, the controversy comes in as to whether or not the implicit multiplication, you know, then takes precedence over the division. You know, the controversy is whether or not the second step would be the 48 divided by 2 or 2 times 12. Um, so that's that's really the controversy here. Uh, but again, if you're following the modern interpretation of the order of operations, uh, basically the way it's described in PEMDAS and BODMAS, the answer would be 288. And um, that's really just because the order of operations tells us to resolve multiplication and division from left to right. You know, no distinctions made between implicit uh, and explicit multiplication. Um, now, there are some Casio scientific calculators out there. Um, I've actually done a video on this, and I've even shown screenshots from the manuals. And there are some older Casio scientific calculators where they actually program those to give precedence um, to implicit multiplication um, over explicit multiplication and division. 
So it adds a whole lot of confusion to it. You know, if you find one of these, uh, I can't recall the exact um, models. I'll try to put a link to that video here in the description. But um, I've got, like I said, I got a video that goes into a little more detail on that. So hopefully this has all been helpful. I know it's confusing. Um, these problems are all really viral. Um, I've got a whole series of these viral problems. Um, and I'm describing both sides of, of the argument because there's a lot of people that are, are, are arguing for implicit multiplication. And there is a lot of historical precedents. You know, in algebra, uh, you see that used. You see implicit multiplication used in a lot of scientific texts. Uh, it's been used a lot over the years. But um, there has been a real push. Uh, in in the more modern interpretation of the order of operations to not to not give precedence to implicit multiplication. So you know the best thing I can tell you is be clear when you write a problem. You know if you're going to write it out, maybe you don't want to use the obulus. You know the obulus is is interpreted there's, with no grouping properties, but there is historical context for it being looked at a different way. Um, and then you know if you want to ignore this whole controversy over implicit multiplication, oh, maybe you should write the problem out a little bit better than that. Use a use a symbol, use a multiplication symbol, uh, and then it's, it's much, much clearer. So yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of arguments in the, uh, the comments and uh, things that people are going to say I left out or did incorrectly, but, you know, go ahead, leave some comments, tell me what you guys think about it. Um, I'm hoping to move on to some other topics. I've kind of gone through this viral series of uh, problems about as far as I can go, really. Uh, sorry about that. But um, yeah, um, I hope everybody's enjoyed the video. Please uh, read through the description. Um, I've got links to some of the other videos. And uh, hopefully it'll make you a little bit more prepared if you're on Facebook, uh, if you're online and you're having a discussion about some of these problems. You know, hopefully some of the info I've got here will help you. Uh, help you explain that and uh, understand it better. So um, thanks again for making it through the video. I know it's been fairly long. Uh, it's a fairly simple problem, but um, it's also viral, and I wanted to describe um, the issues related to it. So anyhow, everybody, have a great day, and see you all in the next video.